Hello again, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'd like to welcome you to a very special episode, which I want to call Network Admin Wife. See what I did there? Okay. That's my wife. <laughs> okay. Hi. This is my wife, Christy. So, uh, and we were just talking. I told her this is going to be completely unscripted. There's no, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, it's a little bit about Christy and I. We've been married 33 Almost. years. Almost. Coming up next mm -hmm. anniversary is 33 years. Um, we met in church. We, let's see, she played piano. I sang bass in the choir. And it was quite the scandal. And we both played handbells. Yeah. We were in a handbell choir. That's probably where we really met. And we dated, got married. And there's a whole story behind that, which we won't go into. Um... But it, it, we ended up here 33 years later with two grown children, and uh, yeah. So she can normally talk a lot, but she's a little camera shy, so we'll, we'll see if we can draw her out. Um, so I, I told her I was going to bring her on and uh, not only give my, my video channel a little sex appeal, but... Um, <laughs> but uh, to also just kind of give you the perspective of, uh, I've been giving you my perspective as working as a network admin, and I thought maybe it'd be interesting for you guys to hear what uh, the uh, the other half of the coin, the other side of the coin, um, she's, she's a big part of my life and a big part of why I can do what I do. So we, uh, we'll give her a chance to talk here in, in just a minute, as soon as I think of a question to ask her. Mm -hmm. So how how's, what's it like being... I mean, don't tell them what it's like being married to me because that'd be a whole other topic. But just my job in general, how has it impacted you, do you think? Um, it hasn't impacted me um, a lot, except for those times where you had to deal with a virus or something really tough where you, it required you to be there, you know, 12 hours, probably overnight sometimes. But they're rare and um, they don't come often. And then, you know, the only hard thing about that is it, it stresses him out. So, um, and then, but we know he recovers and, and, and then so, okay now. After, you know, after a good dinner and, you know, some Coke. <laughs> uh, Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. That's Not the like drink. Not cocaine or meth or anything. Yeah. yeah. So, or these days, <laughs> ginger ale. Yeah. And Excedrin. Yes, that seemed to be a very... Many, many bottles of Excedrin. ...common supplement when he's out um, fixing things. Excedrin is vitamin E, I call it. Yeah. So... Other than that, it was good. I think when the kids were growing up, it was a little harder in that... I think he was just probably not available or just have to take a break because, you know, our kids are... You know, when they're young, they're demanding... So, but he did, he did a good job even with that. Yeah. Working on, uh, so it hasn't just been network admin type work as long as we've been married. It started out with, uh, I was an electronics technician and then moved into desktop support and then moved into network support. And then it went kind of back and forth between network servers and desktop for several years. Um, through being a consultant, through being at the bank, and through being at the newspaper, and then now being here at the uh, at the hospital. So, has it uh, has there ever been a job that seemed easier on me than uh, than than has one job seemed easier for me than another one? Um. Well, in various degrees, like you you commuted a long time for eleven years. So that was hard on him because he had to go to the Bay Area and he had to travel an hour and a half to two hours. One way. One way. And so that really exhausted him. But I think the easiest one was, the relief was when you went to the bank because you only had to travel 30 minutes. Um, that was then though, back in early 2000s where, or mid 2000s when it, there's no traffic here yet. Now it's like the 30 minutes is... 50 minutes now, but, yeah. 
I think you said it, it seemed like I was a different person. Yeah, he because sure was. Commute. Yeah, it pretty much took his, kind of like his life right away. <laughs> his clarity and uh, he's just exhausted. Because he doesn't sleep. He didn't sleep. So it wasn't the job so much, it's just the commute. Yeah, it's the commute. Now the job, the hardest one is probably the uh, uh, the newspaper. I almost said the company. But um, the the newspaper was demanding because they the people there weren't weren't good managers, so, and um, just expected so much uh, from you and de demanded like quick answers and which I don't know anything about. He would know that it's like they want him to jump hoops and make it like you know just do it now and I want it I want the answer yesterday and. You know, they didn't give him time to just, it's usually there's like a lot of multitasking and it was really hard, I think, to do it all in a short amount of time. And some nights spent well, well into the evening hours on the phone yeah. with a bunch of other people trying to solve a problem. So that, it did affect me because I could not sleep because it's either they're calling it on off and on or... They would wake us up at 12 midnight, or that he would just come at 2, 3 in the morning, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so what Christy's talking about is um, many jobs, especially network admin jobs, will require you to be on call for a portion of the job. And at my last job, which was McCla McClatchy Newspapers, um, Sacramento Bee, Modesto Bee, Miami Times Herald, Kansas City Star, um... They required you to be on call 24-7, 365. It didn't matter. You, know, you were on call all the time. So, um, yeah, that, that's what she's talking about there. Um, there was no extra pay for that. It was just part of the job. We were salaried and expected to work our 40-hour work week and then be on call whenever they decided to call. And, uh, yeah, there were times when, uh, you know, we're both trying to go to sleep and then I get a call at maybe midnight, maybe 1 a.m., and uh, I'm on the phone until until it gets solved. And sometimes that that went for over multiple days. So uh, yeah. that's what you're talking about. That's yep. that was the hardest part on you. Yeah. Now that I think about it, that that was the hardest part. So on call. Yeah. And even though I would take the phone into the other room, and she's in the bedroom, uh, she still can't sleep because you know she knows I'm awake and I'm not there, and she hears me talking out there. It's hard for her. Yeah. To, can't sleep right so and even in the current job I am on call but the nice thing about this job is that I am paid to be on call so those hours that I am on call they they pay me a percentage of my my uh, hourly base pay and um, yeah. yeah so it's that's that's nice and I'm only on call one week out of three so there's three people that rotate and we each take a turn and uh, so it's it's not like we're constantly being bombarded with calls like it was in my last job. Yeah, it was kind of night and day between the private sector and the public one because he not only was compensated, but also the, the job isn't as as hard as it can be when there are problems. It's not as demanding and they don't have their hands on his neck trying to figure out, trying to tell him to fix it. Whatever it is. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Network down. No power. AT&T. Yeah. So the reason they called me a lot of my last job was I was um, kind of one of their experts on a, a product called Riverbed. And Riverbed uh, Steelhead was the actual model. Uh, Riverbed is the company. And what the Steelhead did was um, data compression. So when you have a, a WAN, you want to copy data across it. What it does is remove redundant data. Um, so it compresses compresses the data you have to move by removing redundancy. Um, you save a, f a file on the far side of a WAN link, and it compares what you're saving to what's already there, and it only writes the changes. So, um, and it does that for every single bit of data that goes across it. So it's a, it's a really neat neat device that really cuts down on uh, 
bandwidth. So if you want, you can you can check out Riverbed Steelhead. So, which she knew nothing about. She just knew I was working on something. So now you know. Now yeah. you know what that thing was that they called me about. There was a time. Yeah, all I know is wireless, wireless, wireless. <laughs> and wireless. He got, he just about nauseated from that. I think it was a time, I think the weeks on, that's all he worked on. I think at the newspaper. Mm -hmm. the... Yeah. <laughs> when you awful. push a wireless system to its limits and ask it to do things it was never really designed to do, yeah, you, you spend a lot of time tweaking it. So. Extreme, extreme wireless at my current job. It's the same wireless system, same access points. It's been extremely reliable uh, at the last place. It just never was. So they were they were at, they were pushing it beyond its limits. So oh, I'm trying to think of what else. Well, we can get into prayers because. Oh yeah. Um. A lot of those times, I think he would tell me, or unless you want to start, I don't know if you want well, to start with ahead, a question. You. He would tell me the problem at hand, um, you know, different occasions, especially if it's a virus or I don't know what else happened. I don't know the specifics, but he probably would remember. But there's just things that he could not fix or could not figure out. So he had to have, find resources from vendors, and he did that a lot. But even that, uh, with what's going on with the company it's hard to know where the root problem is of something not working so he what i would do is i would pray for him through the night sometimes or through the project and he gets through it you know you know one day at a time but or one hour at a time and he make his you know we pray him through all those issues <laughs> i do anyway Guys, I don't know how she prays. I don't know what she says, but this woman gets results when she <laughs> prays. God, she has God's ears. Um, so when she prays about something, we, we, we get an answer. Sometimes it's not always the answer we want, but uh, it's, it's almost always the answer that's the best for us. Well, it always is. Not almost always. It's always been the best. Um, so, yeah, she's she's... This is the biggest tool in my toolbox right here is, is uh, Christy and her prayers. So um, never underestimate the power of a praying wife. Um, so you guys, you guys know I, I make no, I don't hide anything about uh, my religious beliefs on this channel. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of what I've accomplished has all been due to God, not, uh, not through my knowledge. You guys know I am not that smart. <laughs> if you've watched my videos, you know I am not that smart. Um, but my videos aren't really a, a how-to. It's just more of a of a peek in what what the job is like. So, uh, yeah, if you're tuning in looking for a way to solve a problem, um, there's your biggest answer right there. It's prayer. So he thinks he's not smart, but I think he's wise because of I think the experiences that experience that he had through time, probably three decades now, I think gives him a little bit of perspective. Um, I suppose for some those in their 20s or 30s that just go in because he also have basic knowledge of you know other things that's not related to network like electronics and things like yeah. that i think they they help yeah after 30 years it's rare to run into a problem that you haven't seen before <laughs> the problem is is you're 30 years older and you have trouble remembering mm. that you actually saw the problem before <laughs> and <laughs> remembering that you you've already found this answer um even with my poor memory and my notes, sometimes I forget that I've already solved a problem. And, you know, if I would, could just find it in my notes, I'd solve it. But I have to resolve the problem every time. Hmm. So. Or call the vendor again. Call the vendor again. <laughs> there was that time you were, when you were still young, um, you, you just kind of went on the fly, I think, and solving things. But I think through, I think when the, maybe it's McClatchy where you start having a notebook. And I think I thought that was helpful. Actually, I started that at Lockheed. Is it Lockheed? Okay, yeah. yeah. And I think it's helpful because the problems don't always show up. Sometimes, I don't know, is it a couple of years later it happens again? Yeah, yeah usually the you... same problem but just in a different situation. Yeah, you forget. Yeah, I learned to do that from... Um... Actually, it was a guy, he ended up working at Foster Farms. He went, he was yeah. at Lockheed, he moved out to Foster Farms. His name was C.J. Jones. Oh. Um, 
He was uh, the VAX manager for a, a program I was working in at Lockheed, and I, I was replacing him. He was leaving to come work out here at uh, Foster Farms near where we are. And um, so he was trying to teach me everything he knew, and I was just completely overwhelmed by everything. And one day he, we, he said, come here, let's sit down and talk about this. So we sat down and we talked, and he said, look, you don't need to know all there is to know about this. I don't know all there is to know about this. And he thumbed through his notebook, which he was giving me, and he said, here, here's the support number for the vendor. Here's the support number for this vendor. He says, all you have to do is call them. They will walk you through the, through the problem and solve it for you. And I don't know why, but that's, I had never considered that before. Up until that point, I had tried to solve every problem with my own knowledge at Lockheed. I never reached out for help from anyone. And, um... Uh, Finding out that there are actually vendors that can help you was like an epiphany. Um, and ever since then, it's like, hey, there's no problem I can't solve. Just give me the phone number for the vendor. And, uh, yeah, working with the vendors, I've been able to... And that's how I've learned a lot of what I know now, too, is encountering a problem. And I'll spend a little bit of time trying to fix it on my own and then Google it and try to fix it that way. And if I still can't come up with an answer that works, then I call the vendor... Um, usually spend no more than 30 minutes trying to solve it or google it before i call the vendor um and then yeah that's that's how we work through a problem so it's old school and i think there's so asking for help no the notebook <laughs> method oh yeah well because it's it's all there in a book i mean you can do it on google i guess on documents word documents if which you is want. what i do now which is what he does that's that's not how i think but anyway i figure most people in your line of work do that that's okay i like the way you think yeah <laughs> well because sometimes you can with the notebook or any binder i think you can go through it in tabs depends yeah that's just how i think but yeah i don't use tabs i just use different files so i'll have a yeah. file for this oh, type yeah, of equipment and then i'll have a file for that's this type of better, equipment yeah. and then i just put my notes for each one of those like for my extreme switches i have a file with with notes just for that and then a file for my uh palo alto firewalls will have its own document with with my solutions in it okay. and yeah every time i come up with a new solution or learn of a new solution from the vendor i document it in there complete with screenshots don't forget the screenshots mm. yep that's good because <laughs> nothing I think in pictures. Actually, I think in cartoons, Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner. But um, aside from that, the pictures help me to, to visualize. <laughs> She's smiling because she knows it's true. Uh, the pictures help me visualize and, and uh, document the answer better for me than just words writing it down. So, I don't know. What else should we talk about? People. People? Yeah, I thought part of the... See, I told you we didn't need a script. Part of the issues I think that you come across is not so much the actual network problem, but actually the people you work with. I, I feel like that is actually the hardest part of this job are the people. And you can expand on that. I mean, it, it could be from your well, manager to the, the users to, you know, people that are yelling at you and yeah. they want this answer now here. Why is that working? I, yeah, want my I want my Netflix to work. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, uh, and that's really where having a strong faith comes in handy again. Um, I see a recurring theme here. Because um, people, they don't call us just to say, Hi, how are you doing? They call mm -hmm. us because something's broken. Mm -hmm. And usually they wait to call us until they're, they wait until they've become completely utterly frustrated mm -hmm. and angry yep. and um so w when you when you're responding to a network problem you are almost always going to run into somebody who is angry frustrated and just really impatient to get the, pro the problem fixed and that's where it's coming really handy to me to just you know remember the fruits of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control um and try to treat them that way, um, and and remember to not take it personal. It's it's not you that they're angry at. They're they're angry at the situation. They just want the situation to go away. 
Um, and it's just, it can be really difficult sometimes to, to keep that calm and that peace. I think one of the biggest compliments I've ever paid at work was um, from one of my fellow workers who sits on the other side of the cubicle wall from me. And uh, he came up to me one day and he said, how, how do you stay so calm? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, things can be on fire around here and you're just so patient and calm. I said, well, I, geez, thank you, Steve. I guess that's the fruits of the Spirit. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And he knows his help comes from the Lord. Yeah. yeah my help comes from God. Mm -hmm. I love it. And honestly, guys, I don't pray as often as I should. I should pray uh, way more than I do. But I have found that when I pray for my work day first, and then pray before I start trying to solve a problem, and then pray and thank God after I've solved the problem, um, these problems get solved a lot quicker. And I, I, there's no you know, documentary proof I can give you, give you as to why. You know, I can just tell you that in my case, it seems to work. So, yeah, I've had I've had some yeah. really cantankerous bosses and yeah. bosses bosses, and uh, yeah, it's they've they've taught me a lot about patience. So that now that I've come here, yeah. within six years of the end of the line, um, at least as far as work goes. Yeah, they're they're the hardest, and I think that's what I pray for because I think it, it's. I don't know how, what would you think the percentage is of your stress coming from them yelling at you versus the problem that you, they want you to solve right now? Oh, it's <laughs> it's 100% of the people. Okay, see? The problem is just, I know I'll get that yeah. fixed. It's just a matter of, you know, being left alone so I can fix yeah, it. Yeah, that's the, that's the big deal. And I think for those that, I don't know, I guess you're talking to network admi ad administrators. And yeah, that's the hard part is to deal with people to be doesn't matter how smart you are you don't know how to deal with them and what is it usually quell their anger and I think that's what he's good at um, I think speaking to them clearly and communicating um, communicating what you're trying to do what uh, sometimes he has to ask what is it you want from me you know and instead of yelling and so and that takes some people skills yeah. Hey, what do you want? Spatula la facce. <laughs> well, a lot of stuff, he, he, the users are hundred not mostly women. There are men, but the bosses are probably men, but, you know, the users. Well, at the bank, when I worked at the bank, mm -hmm. my end users were mostly women. Okay. I would say yeah. probably 90% women and 10% men. And they were the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. They're emotional. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's not a sexist remark. It's just fact, because there were more women than men. So they were the biggest problem. Um, here at the hospital, it's kind of reversed. We have a pretty... It's still mostly women, because there are far more f female nurses and doctors. Female nurses than male nurses. And more male doctors than female doctors. But there's a pretty even mix. And here at the hospital, the nurses are the most patient with, with me. And waiting for me to solve things. The doctors are not. Mm -hmm. Some of them are. Some of the doctors are really cool. Um, but some of them are mostly the younger ones. Uh, the, you know, they're just, they're interns or they've just become residents. And uh, they know it all. And uh, since, since they can fix a problem just like that, they don't understand why I can't. And uh, I don't know. Luckily, the nurses are there to run interference for me a lot of the time, so. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely the personality. So, that's one. That's that's a really good point. Big big thing to learn, is, as Christy was saying, is it doesn't matter, I'm going to paraphrase what she said, it doesn't matter how much network knowledge you gain or computer knowledge. Um, if you don't know how to present that in a calm, rational way to the people that you're serving, um it's probably going to be a very difficult job for you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you learn to, to manage the people as well as you manage your network, it, it'll be a very enjoyable job. Because unfortunately, you, you can't just barricade yourself in a back office and just do the network. Um, 
you do have to come out. You do, you do have to, because a lot of times when you're, um, I always say that that ninety percent of my job is lawyer. Um, I'm having to prove my client is not guilty. The network. Um, so I have to go out and see what the users are seeing and see what they're experiencing um, to, to show them how wrong they are, that it's not the network. So, yeah, so communication, yeah. communication skills is yeah. top a uh, top skill there. Yeah. Learning how to tame lions wouldn't be bad either. That's, <laughs> that, that would be a good skill. Or, you know, fog bees. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, wow, okay. for unscripted, you've uh, had some really good ideas. Oh, thank you. You got any others? No, but this has said the video is almost maxed. Oh, did it say mm -hmm. that? Sorry, guys, the video is almost maxed. So I guess we'll cut it off here. It's been almost half an hour anyway. So okay. thank you very much for joining You're me. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing 30, almost 33 years of my life. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being such a godly and prayerful woman. Mm -hmm. So now you can see the secret to my success. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Network Admin Wife. Uh, we'll catch you all <laughs> next time. God bless. Bye.